Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Renutter. This time, after a brief hiatus, we're going to get back into the saddle and this time we'll start with doing TACX. Now, for those of you who've done any amount of work with primarily Cisco devices, but I know that Juniper uh, also supports it, this is something that is handy to have for, a th for having a single authentication into all the devices and not having to worry about manually setting this up on every individual device. So we're going to get this process started. I've already done the normal step of doing a sudo apt-get update. So we've got that latest available. Now, if you're not sure on the name of what you need to install, but you've got a rough idea, we can do a sudo apt-cache search. And this time we're going to just say tacac, which will be close enough for what we need. And it will sort through what it knows about to see what matches that. And at this point, what we're looking for is the, the very last one you see in the list, and that's TACX Plus. So what we will do is do a sudo space apt get install TACX Plus. Well, it helps you type plus right. And I'll press enter, and it's going to go through the process of, of downloading what it needs to have. And this is something, and we'll say yes, because we're going to have to add some things. This is something that I've gotten very spoiled to having in working with Cisco gear. And if you do any amount of the certification pursuits with Cisco, especially, you're going to have to have some understandings of Syslog. It used to be there was a version of Syslog in the ACS uh, product they had, with AC ACS4 when it ran on top of Windows, that you could... Uh, you know, it wasn't that expensive. Well, now with ACS5 and running as a VMware appliance, it can get a little more expensive. So this gives you a way of getting familiar with working with it, in an, in especially in a certification environment. Okay, now that we've gotten that downloaded and installed, we next need to do a little bit of configuring. So we'll do sudo space nano space etc backslash tacx plus backslash tech underscore plus dot conf. Now you at a minimum will have an exchange key like this. Now you can set it individually per device. So if you have uh, you know a different one for each device, which for a small number of devices is one thing but for a large number of devices can become a little bit unmanageable. You can start out with a central key to get it up and running. Then you, know, you can go to having one key for a group of devices, but for the purpose of what we're going to discuss today, we're going to stay with just the one device that you see right here. Now that we've got, we're, we'll start with that key, and this is a key that you do want to change. The next thing we do is, is set up a user credential. Now, in doing TACX, what I suggest people do, this is something that the person I learned a lot about from TACX from had gotten me used to thinking, there is going to be a time when TACX may not be working or the server it's on may have a problem, what have you. So you always need a back door. We'll discuss this in a later podcast, but you'll, we'll show you how to create a back door. So if TACX isn't responding or isn't working correctly, that you'll have an idea of where to uh, to look for things. At least you still can get in your devices, but that is certainly a password that you want to want to guard very carefully. So we'll create a central user ID. We'll start user space equals space admin, and then our friend the squiggle pragget. Enter, and then we'll do default space service equals permit. Now, what this does is set the stage so that unless we specifically disallow something, it will go ahead and allow it. And we'll do a name, and this is more like a comment, and put it in quotes, admin user, close quotes. And then this is where we will set the password. Now, for this exercise we're going to say it's going to be in clear text and then we're going to actually follow it with what the password is going to be okay admin admin 
I know that's not a great combination, but you know, I'm just showing you th through the process of getting it up and running. Certainly, you would want to use something else. And if you have other people getting into this file to make changes, there is a way, and we'll touch on it in, in a later posting, how to go about doing that. But you can actually encrypt the password. There's a service that it comes along with getting TACX Plus installed, and you can actually go and encrypt the password. But again, we'll we'll deal with that at another time. Then we'll say service equals exec. If I can spell exec right, space another open squiggle. Now, just like in, in programming, if you're used to it, you notice we're starting to get into a nested situation. So you're going to need to watch that as you get finished. And we're going to say our privilege level is going to be 15. And then we'll do one close squiggle, two close squiggle. That's it. We've now got a basic configuration up and running. So we'll answer yes. Okay. Now over here on another tab, I've got a Cisco device at the ready to start doing some testing. Now what we'll want to do is we'll verify our IP address. And obviously I shouldn't have used that command. Now it's going to go out and do some testing that's going to try to do to validate that command. So we'll do ifconfig. Okay, there's 15.62. And this is another good reason to have IP domain lookup turned off. So we'll do, I should have done a show IP interface brief, which is what I should have done, but okay. So there's 6.9. 6.2, so we can verify connectivity, ping 192.168.15.62. Okay, that says they're talking. So now what we can do, this is, I'm just going to show you a couple different ways to do this. There is a test command you can do on the Cisco side, and I've already got the configuration, and we'll, there's several ways we can do this. Again, this is another one I'll show you in, in the next posting I'm going to do on this. We'll do a test, triple A, space, group, and I've already got TACX defined on here, we'll do TACX plus, and we'll do admin, and then the password, and then legacy, and that tells it the ports that we want it to test with. Say, now it's saying it's rejected it. Okay, now, but if you look over here, we just put that user in, but we forgot a step. So what we're gonna have to do is we've gotta restart TACX. Anytime you make a change to the configuration file, you're gonna have to restart it. So we'll do a sudo space service space TACX plus restart. All right, and then we can go back here and do a status. And if there was a problem, it should have shown a, shown an error. It didn't. Okay, we're up and running. So we'll use our friend the up arrow key and just repeat that command. Now, successfully authenticated. Now, this is a way you can test it from the Cisco device to see what's going on. And I'd certainly encourage you when you're first turning up TACX on any device, always log in with the local account. So if something happens, you're into the device and you can still do some changes. So if we go over here and if we look at the file, then we'll do a tail space var log tech underscore plus dot ACCT, and this is the accounting file that TACX used. Now you can see the exact command, maybe it's the test that came through when we logged in. So you can actually saw it, do a ping. So if we'll go back over here and we'll do log out. And now I'll go in with admin, admin. Okay, now see it authenticated and it's going to actually show you and there's some other debugs that we'll, we'll cover at a later point. Now you can see, okay, it may have lied, our, but you know, we've already shown you the, the process and there's some of the files that, that I'm still learning with this, but this kind of gets you up and running. Now let's do an experiment here, do a tail var log messages. Okay. That one doesn't, didn't show anything. And let's go over here and look at our old friend syslog. Now you can see where TACX shows the other device connecting. But there's you know, there's just all sorts of things you can do with it. But this gets you up and running. 
and shows you, you know, that there at least is a way, especially if those of you who are going through the certification path, that there is a, a way of setting up PACACs without having to spend many thousands of dollars to uh, to get the system from Cisco. But at least, you know, gives you a way of testing. So that's all that I'm going to show you for today. We've got several more just in this series plan. I'm going to show you the the details of setting it up on the Cisco side, some additional debug commands to look at. Uh, we'll also, uh, it's going to take a little bit of figuring out for me because I have not done it before, but what it takes to get TACX up and running on a Juniper device. And then the other piece that will be interesting is setting up command level authorization. And I've had to do this in the past to where, say, a junior person was brought on board in the department and you didn't want them getting into certain commands. Like, you know, they had to get into the configure prompt, but you didn't want to be able to do a, a write erase or other commands that could be destructive. And so you start listing the commands that they are either allowed to use or, depending on how your logic is set up for that user, commands that they aren't allowed to use so you can go you know either what they can do or what they can't do depending on how you you set up your logic but that way they can do some of the commands that are going to be needed but you can lock them out of some of the more dangerous ones until you know you're comfortable with with their level of expertise so i appreciate everybody uh, listening and watching to this for more information on this and to see the rest of the series i've done with raspberry pi please check out my website at www.ronnutter.com. Thank you very much for your time.